Before social media influencers were a thing, young people were already leading the way in certain trends. Now, there is a new group in town, the Generation Z, or what we all know as the Gen Zs. These are the children, or these are the people who were roughly born between 1997 to 2010. Although some people say Gen Zs were born between 1995 to 2010, but most people say it's between 1997 to 2010. So I want to know what do you guys think. But I would like to think that the 1995 and 1996 people are just like in the middle, not knowing which way to go. Like it's very, very interesting. I was born in the year 1996 and I like to consider myself a millennial. But I have some Gen Z traits and some things I do are more Gen Z like. And I also have some millennial traits with some things I do are more millennial like. So honestly, at this point, I am really, really confused. The Gen Zs, they've actually grown up with the internet, smartphones and social media. So they are really, really good at navigating the digital world. Gen Z is changing the game for marketers because unlike any other generations before them, this essay would explore what really makes Gen Z's very, very unique. Their values, their habits, and how they shop, and how they are shaping our culture and marketing strategies. Being super connected to technology has also earned Gen Z's the nickname the digital natives. Gen Z's or the generation Z, they are very, very diverse and understanding what they are is key for anyone who is trying to sell to them. In today's world, which generation you belong to just matters more than how much money you have. Young people, especially Gen Z's, they have a very big say in what is popular and what brands people actually buy. In places like Brazil, Gen Z's, they already make up a very big part of the population, I think 40%. So when it comes to media, especially social media, Gen Z's, they are literally in charge. They are the ones setting the trends that marketers are trying to keep up with and they are not just buying stuffs they also implement their values like caring about mental health and social issues and this actually plays a very big role in their shopping habits so let's just zoom out for a moment and just look at the big picture here each generation is shaped by the world that they grew up in. Baby boomers, they focused more on expressing their beliefs through what they bought. Gen X, they cared more about the status, while millennials were more about collecting experiences. Personally, I would like to say that the millennials, they are like the most traumatized generation. And that is because what the baby boomers put on the Gen X, they were able to take it. But what the Gen X put on the millennials, we were not able to take it. We are the ones who decided to change almost everything. That's why we have the minimalistic mom because maybe your childhood was filled with many unnecessary things. So like you trying to come out of that, you decide to just be extreme. <laughs> That's just how I see the millennials. When we come to the Gen Z's, the Gen Z's are like the truth finders, both for themselves and also for their society. They're about being true to themselves and understanding others rather than just fitting into just one specific mode. Hi guys, my name is Joel and hi, if this is the first time, welcome to my channel. Can you like and share this video? It will really mean the world to me. Also on this channel, I speak about anything I want to speak about and I'll also share more educative light on different topics and different moments whether they are viral or not. Subscribe if you haven't and it will of course like help push the algorithm so that people out there will see my video and know about me. That being said, let's get right into this topic. Let's understand the Gen Z culture. Gen Z culture is very diverse. They are all about diversity, inclusivity and just being constantly plugged in online. Unlike the older generations, Gen Z's, they actually grew up in a world where technology and globalization are booming and society was just changing very, very fast. This environment has therefore shaped their behaviors in very, very unique ways. One of the standout things about Gen Z's is how much they actually embrace diversity and inclusion. They are the most diverse generation yet, which means that they are really, really good at understanding and appreciating different backgrounds and perspectives. 
Gen Zs, they welcome people from all walks of lives, regardless of the race, gender, sexuality, or identity, which makes society more open and accepting. Like I said earlier, the Gen Zs, they are also called the digital natives. Even though, let's say, in 1997 or 1998, the technology we have now is not what we had then. But I can remember in primary school, that's when, like, computer became more apparent the internet came out around that time ww web came out around that time we had internet explorer so even though the internet now or technology now is not as apparent as it was then there was still some type of technology i can remember when cell phones came into fruition i can remember my dad's first cell phone so literally mobile phones were around that time when the generation z were being born social media is also a very big part of the gen z's and tech is also a big part of their lives it influences how they communicate how they learn and also how they view the world and because they are so comfortable with technology gen z's they can use this technology to just make their voices heard they are the creators they are the activists they are entrepreneurs using digital tools just to make a difference on a very global scale. Gen Z's, they value honesty, they value authenticity, especially from brands and individuals. They can easily spot when something isn't genuine and they prefer real, relatable content. Brands that share their values and show they care about important issues are more likely to end their trust and loyalty one thing i love about the gen z's which i've mentioned before is the fact that they are very inclusive they are incredibly inclusive they don't see a difference between friends they meet online and those in real life they're always moving between different online groups that support their courses thanks to how easy it is to like connect online like me i have friends that i've never seen before but we just like literally like talk online and like really really vibe but we've actually never even seen before and there are friends that I'm, I've seen in real life that I really don't vibe to like that. And that's one thing the Gen Z's have actually made possible. So for Gen Z's, online communities are very crucial because they allow people from all backgrounds to just come together and just make a difference regardless of their financial situation. Moreover, Gen Z's, they actually play very high value on individuality and self-expression. They're not interested in following the crowd or conforming to traditional norms. Instead, they just want to carve their own path and show the world who they truly are. So let's talk about the digital evolution. Here, we're going to understand the Generation Z's impacts and challenges. And here we have four points I'm going to make. The first one is the digital habit of the Gen Z's. And here, the first point will point out under the digital habit of the Gen Z's is the digital dependency gen z's or generation z they are deeply ingrained in digital culture and this greatly influences how they consume goods and services so when it comes to shopping they overwhelmingly prefer the convenience and extensive options that are offered by online platforms compared to traditional brick and mortar stores so with just a few clicks they can explore a very wide range of products they can compare prices and they can make purchases without leaving their homes and i this is what i love just prefer to shop online and if it's not my size i return it and, and this preference for online shopping is driven by their desire for convenience however this heavy reliance on digital devices come with its set of challenges our gen z is incredibly adept at using technology there's also risk of overdependence leading to negative consequences. Excessive screen time can also lead to social isolation as face-to-face -face interactions are basically replaced by virtual connections. Secondly, short attention spans. The pervasive presence of digital content in Gen Z's lives has also contributed to the development of shorter attention spans. Constantly bombarded with a plethora of information such as social media posts, videos and news articles, Gen Z's have actually become accustomed to quickly scanning through content. This has also made it increasingly challenging for brands to capture and retain their attention for extended periods of time. 
brands they've tried to adapt to marketing strategies to engage in Gen Z's effectively. So here they've utilized concise and visually appealing content that grab their attention quickly. The third point under the digital habits of Gen Z's is the information overload. We access to an abundance of information from various sources, including social media, news websites, and online forums. Gen Z, they actually face the challenges of navigating through a sea of data. While this world of information can be empowering, it also poses risks such as misinformation, anxiety, and difficulty in discerning credible sources. Hey guys so we have a very first sponsored post on this channel and our sponsor is literally me let me share my very personal journey with you and how it actually inspired the creation of my incredible journal prior to 2021 my journaling routine was just pretty basic i just used to scribble thoughts here and there and then i stumbled upon a whole new realm of journaling techniques that completely transformed the way i approached it Practices like the law of attraction, gratitude journaling, and manifestation became a very integral part of my daily routine. Now, let me just tell you about this journal. This is not your ordinary journal. It is a very comprehensive tool that is designed to facilitate deep introspection and personal growth. This journal is packed with thought-provoking prompts, dream journaling sections, dedicated reflection pages and it's like literally having a personal guide through your innermost thoughts and emotions. Each day you will find ample space to set your intentions, to track your progress and reflect on your journey. And when you reach the end of the diary, don't worry, the journal doesn't even have to end there. I have added additional prompts, 30 additional prompts and exercises that will actually keep the momentum going after the last page is filled. What sets the journal apart is its timeless design. It's not bound by date because it allows you to embark on your journaling adventure whenever the inspiration strikes. This 31 day journal actually provides the perfect balance of structure and flexibility. It is available in both hardcover and paperback editions. What are you waiting for? Just take the next step in your journaling journey and unlock new levels of self-discovery with the ultimate manifestation and dream journal curated by me honestly this journal is something that i have always wanted to do for a very long time or i have actually been doing for a very long time and this is exactly how i actually journal i started journaling this way in 2021 where i actually manifested the location i'm living in now i manifested my previous job i manifested like my cat honestly like um, and again, when it comes to manifestation, please remember to put in the work. This is not a magic trick. <laughs> this is not a magic trick to whatever you want. But when it comes to scripting, scripting is very, very essential because what does scripting do? You script the life you want and when it actually happens, you can literally fall back as to when you scripted that and be like, oh my God, I actually did script this. So journaling is literally a guide to give you your dream life is not a magic trick that just takes you there disclaimer so in case you actually do want to purchase this kindly click the link in my description box to get your hands on it today and embark on a very transformative journey of personal growth and reflection thank you guys so much for supporting me and the first 100 people or the first 150 people to purchase this journal you have a very special place in my heart Thank you so, so much. I really do appreciate it. So now, let's go back to this video. Second point we are going to make is the impact on marketing strategy. So this has three baby points too. And the first one is the brand skepticism. Gen Z, unlike previous generations, they tend to approach traditional advertising and brand messages with a healthy dose of skepticism skepticism that i really don't know how to pronounce that word they've grown up in an era where they are bombarded with ads from every single angle whether it's on tv social media or billboards as a result they've actually become adept at spotting insincerity and inauthent boo and inauthenticity gen z values authenticity and transparency and they expect brands to be very genuine in their communication if they perceive any lack of authenticity or attempts to manipulate them this could actually lead to backlash from gen z's and 
Gen Z is one thing about them is that they're very, very quick to call out brands that they feel are being very disingenuous. Brands must work harder to actually earn the trust and credibility of this generation. To add avoidance, Gen Z is they've actually become sophisticated strategies for avoiding traditional advertising. They are skilled at using ad blocking software. They are skilled at skipping ads on streaming platforms and simply turning out or scrolling past ads on social media. And this poses a very significant challenge for brands to reach Gen Z's through traditional advertising channels. So to capture the attention of Gen Z's brands, they actually really do need to think outside the box and adopt like more creative and non-intrusive marketing strategies. Like me, I have a very short attention span and I have a short attention span. I don't know why my videos are like 40 minutes sometimes. And I always try to make it shorter, but like, because I have so much things to say, I just put it out there and obviously I know 40 minutes is long. So kudos to you guys who actually do watch to the end. This is something I'm very, very passionate about if I'm being honest. So when it comes to adverts and when I'm scrolling through Instagram or like TikTok or YouTube and there is an ad, if the ad is very catchy at the beginning and I scroll past, I scroll back to just see what it's about. But if it's not catchy, I just scroll back up because <laughs> that is where brands literally have to like sit down and just make sure that, oh, the first line of this ad should be very catchy that when they scroll up, they scroll back down just to watch the ad. And I'm very glad to see that there are some companies that have actually gone this Gen Z route, for example, like Coke, like Nike, and I'm going to go and Fenty Beauty, which I'm going to talk about later in this video. Privacy concerns. As digital natives who have grown up with technology at their fingertips, Gen Zs, they are incredibly aware of the importance of privacy and data security. They are concerned about the collection and the use of their personal data by companies and they are wary of sharing information online. Brands, they actually need to be transparent about their data practices and demonstrate a commitment to protecting the privacy of their customers, particularly the Gen Zs. This means clearly communicating how data is stored, collected, and used, as well as providing options for users to control their privacy settings and preferences. Brands that prioritize data security and respect the privacy concerns of this generation are like most likely to end their trust and loyalty. So the third point I'm going to make is the influence on mainstream culture. And the first point I'm going to make on that is, is the homogenization of culture. While this generation champions diversity and celebrate the uniqueness of various cultures, there is also a concern that mainstream media and big brands might end up taking bits and pieces from niche subcultures and making them mainstream. This process is known as cultural appropriation and can sometimes dilute the original significance and meaning of these cultural elements. For example, fashion trends or music styles that originated from specific cultural communities may lose their authenticity. As a result, what was once a meaningful expression of identity for a particular group may become commercialized and lose its cultural significance. For example, saging. So I am a spiritual babe and I used to sage with sage, but now I use Palo Santos. And my friend, she is like my soul sister and she came to my house and we we're like doing some practices and she was using Palo Santo and I was like, oh, I have that, but I've never used it before because when I tried to light it up, it just dies off on me. I was like, do you use sage? Because I have sage which actually like lights up like longer. And she was like, I don't use sage any longer. And I was like, why? She was like, sage is meant for the more indigenous people and that's what they use, but now they can't even see sage to use that because People have actually like literally sold them to a vast, to the whole world basically. And now it's hard for them to actually get what is actually does. So she pays solidarity to them by like not using it, even though she knows she can't stop the whole world from using it. So she just uses Palo Santo. And that actually really did touch my heart. And that was the last time I actually got sage. Now I use Palo Santo and I have like a, I buy them in like bulk and literally that's actually what I use for cleansing compared to sage. So I don't know if you guys can see what I'm going for. I could go on and on. For example, now we see white people using braids, doing braids or extension when there is literally a 
whole reason as to why people get angry as to why that happens. First of all, braids date back to back to ages of when before colonialism and when colonialism happened, when the period of slave trade and everything. And that's what the slave owners used to use to transport food when they were moving ships. So literally they'll pull rice in between the braids. That's literally how braids actually became more prominent. But slavery aside, why people are really why people get angry when people from other races do our hairstyle is because first of all, our hairstyles are not even allowed in some corporate organization. The other time this guy from B BYU was told to cut off his locks. His literally was told to cut off his locks because it did not fit the school standards. But then we can see other people from other races actually do locks and go away with it. So it is when people get angry because these people work schools, they actually do not accept our hairstyle. And this is literally what makes us us. But, but people from other races can literally do this hairstyle with no consequences and take it out when they feel like, because they know that whatever happens, they're not going to get discriminated against. That's why people, especially the black people, they just get angry when this happens. So I can understand why the black people get angry. The second point I actually make is the polarization. Gen Z is actually known for being passionate about social and political issues, especially social issues. And they often use social media platforms to voice out their opinions and advocate for change. However, this heightened engagement with activism can sometimes lead to polarization and the formation of echo chambers. In an echo chamber, individuals, they are only exposed to viewpoints that align with their own beliefs, leading to lack of exposure to diverse perspectives and this also hinder constructive dialogue. This polarization can further deepen divisions within society and make it very difficult to just find a common ground. It's also very important for this generation to be mindful of the echo chamber effect and also seek out diverse perspectives to foster empathy and understanding. At that point, I want to talk about in the influence on mainstream culture is the pressure for performative activism. Gen Z is passionate about making a difference and standing up for causes that they actually do believe in. However, in the age of social media, there is often a pressure to engage in performative activism or virtue signing. So basically, this actually refers to actions or statements that primarily intend to showcase one's moral values or political beliefs rather than genuinely contributing to meaningful change. For example, when you post about a social justice on social media without taking any tangible action or engaging in meaningful dialogue, it can be seen as performative activism. So while social media can be a very powerful tool for raising awareness and mobilizing support for important causes is very important for not only Gen Z's, literally anybody who has heart. It's very important for us to actually ensure that their activism is rooted in genuine engagement, understanding and commitment to creating positive change in the world. Another point I want to mention is the consumption habit of this generation. So first of all is the impulse buying. The convenience of online shopping and social media advertising can actually lead to impulsive spending habits among the Generation Z. This is why I think I'm a Gen Z because I'm very, very impulsive when it comes to spending, but I like to blame that on my disability. <laughs> I like to blame that on my disability because I have ADHD, so yeah, but it's, it's not an excuse. Um, I'm trying my best to like be very financially smart. I think I'm doing a good job now. Um, but yeah, so when it comes to like spending, online shopping and social media advertising, it can actually lead to impulsive spending habits and this also contributes to financial irresponsibility and debt. Another point I would mention in the consumption habits of the Gen Z is the disposability culture. Gen Z's preference for experiences over possessions may contribute to a culture of disposability. So here, goods and experiences are quickly discarded in favor of the next trend 
or novelty. But there is also this fear of missing out within this generation. So Gen Z's constant exposure to curated lifestyle on social media can excavate feelings of fear of missing out and this can actually lead to the dissatisf dissatisfaction with their own lives and constant quest of validation through consumption. We could see that in the Stanley saga, which I actually spoken about, which would be, I want to bet and say it's here. Yeah, I'm going to bet and say it's there. So which will be linked here. You can see that when it came to the time of the Stanley bottle, everybody like literally was burning because of the fear of missing out. That period was so cringe. Now people don't even really talk about the Stanley bottle any longer. Can you guys see where I'm coming from? So literally nothing really lasts when it comes to this generation. So basically, the Gen Z is the Gen Alpha. Okay, let's talk about drunk elephants. Everybody was going to Sephora to like get drunk elephants and to mess up the tester bottles, the Stanleys. Everybody was running to get Stanleys. People collected like a thousand Stanley bottles. Just for what? Just for what? For nothing because of the fear of missing out. Just because they just wanted to be validated. We saw the video of the woman who came about speaking about her daughter being ridiculed in school because she had her own bottle inside of a standee and the children at school was like laughing at her because she didn't have a standee. So literally, people just crave validation through consumption. So another point I want to mention is the values of these Gen Zs. When it comes to the values, we'll come to the unrealistic expectations that these people have placed. So the Gen Zs, they value authenticity, they value individuality, which is very awesome. However, sometimes their desire for authenticity can actually lead to setting really, really high standards for themselves and others. And they see all these seemingly perfect images and lifestyle on social media and it can make them feel like they are not good enough. This culture of comparison can actually breed self-doubt and make it very hard for them to feel satisfied with who they are and what they've achieved. And I'm not someone who compares myself to people online. That's because I've been able to like differentiate between reality and know that online is not real life. Like I said that in my last video, like literally people show you what they want to show you. Also another point I'd like to mention is cancel culture. Gen Z's are very passionate about social justice and holding people accountable for their actions, which is a good thing. It is really a good thing. But sometimes this passion can actually lead to a phenomenon called cancel culture. I have a video on that already where I've spoken about cancel culture. This is where someone or a brand is being called out and essentially cancelled for doing something that is being wrong or offensive. So while it is very important to like call out harmful behavior, cancel culture can sometimes be harsh and unforgiving, not leaving room for people to learn, to grow or to make amends. It's like giving someone a life sentence for a mistake that they made without even considering whether they can change for the better and that is my problem with cancel culture this can create a culture of fear of judgment where people are literally afraid to speak up or like make mistakes for fear of you know being cancelled and one thing when it comes to cancel culture i feel like the emphasis on cancel culture is like when a woman is cancelled she's cancelled when a man is cancelled he's not really cancelled took Kanye to go like super extreme for him to be cancelled but if Kanye was really really cancelled his song would not go number one once he released it so that's literally what I'm talking about another one I'm talking about and that point I'm going to make up is the lack of commitment Gen Z they are known for being open-minded and fluid when it comes to their identity and values so while this flexibility is a strength it can also lead to a lack of commitment or loyalty in personal relationships and in brand loyalty. They might hesitate to come into long-term relationships or career paths because they are always exploring and evolving. Similarly, they might not stick with one brand for too long because they are always on the lookout for something that is new or something that is exciting. While it's very great to be open-minded and adventurous, it's also very important to recognize the value of commitment and stay true to your word, whether it's in relationships or in consumer choices. However, Gen Z's way of buying things has actually led to a bunch of trends that marketers really need to pay attention to and include in their plans. 
Number one is the mobile first concerns. So 75 of Gen Z as they prefer using mobile phones or mobile devices as their main gadget. That's why you often see them glued to their screen. For them, mobile devices are like Swiss army knives and they use them for literally everything from shopping and socializing to gaming and keeping up with what's literally happening around the world. Social shopping. The influencer culture has a very big effect on how the Gen Z shop. About three quarters of Gen Z people actually follow influencers on social media and a lot of them just find out about new stuff to buy through these influencers. In fact, Gen Z is known to like trust influencers more than how they just trust traditional celebrities when it comes to what to buy. Even me. Honestly, if I see like a celebrity promoting something, I would not trust it as much I would trust an influencer, especially if an influencer I actually do not know. But there are some YouTubers like PewDiePie and Mr. Beast who are very huge influencers for the Gen Z's and they have a lot of sway over what Gen Z decide to buy. Sometimes the sway they have and the influence they have is even more than famous actors and celebrities. Also, Gen Z shoppers, they really listen to what influencers have to say about products because they know their stuff and they seem like regular people that you could hang out with. And half of Gen Z actually say that when an influencer recommends something, it's more of a big deal to them and it can actually even make them decide to buy it. Gen Z, they value honesty, they value realness in influencers and they see them more like friends than distant celebrities, if that makes sense. Because celebrities are like, there's just, just this huge gap between a normal person and celebrities. But like when it comes to influencers, they are more relatable compared to celebrities, if that makes sense. So yeah. Also, Gen Z's, they are driven by values. Half of Gen Z's, they expect brands to like take a clear stance on important issues. It's important to understand that Gen Z isn't like any other generation. They are very, very diverse, like I've said, like countless times. And they really care about things like change, racial equality, and LGBTQ rights. For example, now we know the Palestine movement and how people have been speaking about free Palestine and everything. And Honestly, I think that's another big reason why they want to ban TikTok because literally the Gen Z's, they really, really fought for the Palestinians. And honestly, if not for the fact that this is making a huge buzz on social media, I promise you it would have become worse than what it actually is. Through TikTok, I've been able to learn about this whole war. It's something I could not even know from traditional media, but people have actually shed more light to it, especially the Gen Z people. Also, when it comes to LGBTQ plus rights, Gen Z, they're often called the Snapchat generation and they are three times more likely than any other generation to say that businesses should do more than just make good products and they should also help out their communities and society as a whole. Brands like Huda Beauty, oh my days, she speaks out about the whole Palestinian and Israel. Like, she uses her platforms to talk about it. Also, there's another queer brand I'm following, Sunset Makeup. Like, their, their Instagram bio picture, profile picture is literally the flag of Palestine. So, brands like Fenty Beauty, they're also leading this way in this area by setting new standards for inclusivity in the beauty industry. When Fenty Beauty came out, they had like over 40 different shades and from there, we started seeing brands doing the same. I can remember when I used to do makeup early, my makeup used to look like a whole mess, like my face was different from my body, but guys, I don't know if you guys can see, if this is color graded, this part won't be color graded, I'm going to like literally show you guys like my real skin, like my makeup blending straight into my neck, like literally that, look at my face and my hand, that literally never used to happen before when I used to do makeup, I used to, I mean, my foundation used to be so light, like literally lighter than my neck and everything and now all my foundations they match my neck if that is not what we have always needed and thanks to Fenty Beauty she actually set that standard 
So when Fenty Beauty launched in 2017, like I said earlier, they came up with 40 different foundation shades and this actually did show their commitment to inclusivity right from the start and since then they become a symbol of diversity and representation in the beauty world. So in conclusion, Gen Z is a generation that is very super good with technology, they are diverse and they care a lot about what's happening in the world. This brings both good stuff and challenges for culture and marketing. They are changing things up in a very big way and they are reshaping what is considered cool. They are pushing for important changes in society and they are making marketing totally different. Brands can really connect with Gen Z's by being real, getting them involved and caring about important issues. But it's also very important to recognize the tough stuff that they really deal with like you know being glued to their phones not always trusting brands and feeling a lot of pressure from social media so guys that's all i have for you guys today thank you guys so much for stopping by this video is hella long my recording says one hour eight minutes but i'll try to bring it down but that being said thank you guys so much for stopping by please share this video if you care it really does mean the world to me and i'm going to see you on my next video However, bruh, this is long. Long was the. This is so long, bruh. When did I write all this? I can't believe I wrote this. <laughs>